Perfect. What about you, Brisa? Okay, hello, Brisa. Thank you for being here, Brisa and Christian. Uh, we're here because we're going to have our fifth virtual session in this model number seven, right? Remember that if you have any question or comment at the end of the session or at the end of each section we'll have, uh, you have the opportunity to, <clears throat> to, to ask or to comment, okay? Welcome. Okay, one more. It's in the waiting room. Okay, here we have it. Good afternoon, Siriaka. How are you today? Welcome Siriaka, welcome Christian, and welcome Brisa. We're going to start our, our fifth virtual session. And it's going to be according to the following agenda I have. Wait a minute. I'm going to share my screen. Wait, wait. Yeah. More windows. Yes, this is the agenda we'll have today. In this model number seven, as you can see here, in this fifth virtual session, and this is the agenda. The first point is to welcome you to week number three, already done on Monday, and I'm doing it now. How do you feel, guys? <clears throat> what do you think you're working in the, in the activities you have to do during this week, or the activities you have performed before? How do you feel? Good? not so good, you have some questions related to it because of your grades or something. Okay, well, if you have any comment related to the activities at the end of this point, which is number two. Point number two is to talk about activities of week number two, <clears throat> which were related to um, two interactive activities, the number three and number four. Number three was about a happy day and number four was about making my family timeline. Remember. And let me tell you something about it. Um, in the activity number four, which was a happy day, you had to use past simple because as you may know, you were talking about a situation, um, a happy day that happened in the past. So you had to, to use only past simple, right? And you had to guide yourselves with some questions you have over there. But what I want to take into account, what not what I want, that I had to take into account was the paragraph, a complete paragraph from five lines minimum, eight lines maximum, or more, right? And the other paragraph was about um, how do you feel when you were uh, listening to your families? No, to uh, no. What is important to know past events? What is important to know what past events? That was the the other paragraph, five A lines as maximum or more, right? But let me tell you something about that, right? So some of you didn't write the paragraphs, didn't share all the, uh, well, didn't join all the answers of the questions, 
and you only answer the questions but as I told you before the paragraphs were taken into account if you didn't do that uh, your grade could be uh, low right in the second uh, activity of the last week which was making my family timeline it was about um, make an interview to your uh, family's story and perhaps you didn't know many many things from your family right and you you wanted to to have some of this information you ask probably your your nephew and your nephews your uncle your aunts your your parents your grandparents your great grandparents you have them you probably ask to some of these people mentioned but <clears throat> in order to have information about the history of your family right first you have to write 10 questions in english and the same translated or interpreted in spanish as well then in the second part you had to um to answer the, the questions the previous questions yes in english and spanish as well but remember that i told you not to use when when and when and when all the time right it was like no it was um, allowed to do that right but okay some of you did it some of you did it and okay i took it into account but remember that that i say you didn't right then uh, with this information you get you had to create a timeline a timeline with a program a program could be canva could be powerpoint and i suggested you 23 programs to make or to create this um this timeline if you didn't if you didn't so your um your grade was uh, was low right but take it into account what I said on Wednesdays in the virtual sessions is what you have to do in each activity, right? Okay. Um, well, some of you didn't didn't do what I what I asked you to do, and so that's why your grade was low. Yeah. In this case, you have to do what I say. I, I'm your guide. I'm guiding you in order to do the activity correctly and completely. But it is necessary to attend the virtual sessions or watch the links or the videos in my channel on YouTube in order to clear those um, doubts or those um, questions that you probably have. Okay? That's the invitation to watch the video or to attend the virtual sessions, leave virtual sessions, okay? Well, um, point number three. Uh, in a moment, I'm, I will answer Brisa's question, which was, uh, she has a doubt, and write a paragraph of five page lines describing how you will be in five years. I'm going to, to clear her doubt, right? But in a moment, we are going step by step, right? <clears throat> okay well the third point is to talk about the elements your activity <clears throat> must have in this case each activity must have upper references what can you reference for example an image for example a video on youtube um, a web page a dictionary an app dictionary a, a web page where you get information a google translator etc you can a book probably yeah, you can reference uh, many things, but it is important to have it in each activity, right? If your activity doesn't have, so you will have a lower grade because it is important. It's part of the rubric that I'm going to take into account, right? Another key element is to use the correct uh, structure of verb tense. In this case uh, of week number two, for example, was past simple. In this week, as I told you on Monday, uh, it's going. It was going to be about the future. So, but in future we have um, some, some verb tenses 
which are different to use, right? I'm going to talk about when we check the activities of the week number three. Another activity, another element that your activity must have is um, your activity must have an audio, right? Must be complete. You have to name your file correctly. And of course, uh, you have to deliver it or to send it on time. That's why I ask you in the most attentive way to send your activities no later than Friday, Friday night, uh, Saturday noon, for example. Yeah, but don't wait until Sunday because on Sunday the platform would be saturated or could be saturated and you probably don't, don't have the opportunity to send your activities. So um, you're going to, and the next week you're going to you probably want to ask for an extension of time and it probably I uh, will open it, right? But of course, um, be prepared for that. Yeah, be sure that your activity is uploaded before Saturday, yeah? Okay. <clears throat> Point number four, extensions of time. Remember guys that um, if you have had any any problem in your jobs in the um, and it's your children's school uh, or something you have that you didn't take into account that it was going to happen and you because of that reason you didn't do the activity you probably uh, have the opportunity to send to send the activities or the activity um i'm going to give you some some time right to do that but of course, you have to follow a, a specific process. The specific process is, for example, number one is to do the activity or activities that you haven't done. The second point is to write a message on the um, messenger in prep and linear platform asking me for an extension of time yeah, and telling me which activity telling me um, what is the activity you are going to or you didn't do before and that's why in that way I'm going to to check the activity you you didn't do and I'm, I will open the, the platform for you and I am going to give you like um, one day for you to to send it yeah but of course it takes around five minutes no more than, than five minutes to send the activity so uh, take into account, make sure your activity is complete and make sure your activity is uploaded. And remember that it only applies for the ones who, for any reason, health problems, children problems, job problems, or any problem you have, um, stops you doing to do the activities um, and you probably didn't do it on time. Yeah. It doesn't apply for the ones who have already sent the activities and the purpose of this is to uh, rise or to get a higher rate. It's, it wouldn't be possible because it could be endless uh, to grade these activities, right? But okay, we are here, right? Let's continue. Um, the next point is to talk about the learning forum participation. Some of you have participated in this in these forums of the first and the second week, and you probably are working on this uh, third week in the learning forums. But remember, guys, this is very important to socialize in in this um, in this community, right? In this model, in this model, in this week you will have the opportunity to change exchange information about uh, what are your plans your goals for the future and you need to express your interests your wishes and dreams that you have when you finish your high school online yes you can ask to your classmates as well about what we'll be doing in the next five years um, what they imagine that will um, do after this step of of their lives and that's it that's what you have to do in the um, in the learning form remember it's not evaluated but it has a, a punctuation 
a percentage at the end of your individual part participation platform. <clears throat> Don't forget that. It's very important. So the invitation is done. Talking about the next point is about the videos of the virtual session. Remember, guys, that if you haven't attended the virtual session, sleep virtual session, you have the opportunity to watch the videos in my channel of YouTube with the links I share every time I finish these sessions, right? Immediately, I upload the video to my channel on YouTube and there share the link and you can watch it later, tomorrow, um, and many times, as many times as possible in order to get the information, in order to understand the topic or what you have to do, right? If there's no other way, there is um, not possible for you to, to fail in activities because it's done in each virtual activity. So I explain the topic, I tell you what to do, and it, it is not possible to fail the activity. So you probably, um, or oh, I say, you you will have like 100% with this information I share with you on Wednesdays and Fridays. But you don't do, well, I'm not talking about everybody, right? I'm talking about some of you didn't do what I asked you to do. So you need to to keep your head up and, and go ahead to improve, right? And improve. Don't forget that. And the next point is to talk about activities. Activities of week number three. What do you think? Activities of week number three. Estas actividades de la semana número 3, como ya les compartí eh, el día lunes, estamos eh, trabajando con las estructuras gramaticales del futuro. Ajá. En inglés tenemos algunos eh, futuritos para poder utilizarlos en diferentes... Este, en diferentes formas. Ajá. En diferentes formas podemos utilizarlos y bueno, vamos a utilizar diferentes estructuras gramaticales. Pero para ello vamos a, a ver qué es lo que vamos a hacer en la actividad integradora número 5. Número Dice, Interactive Activity number 5, um, Be a Positive Thinker. Or in our life, we can de develop in the areas that are of our interest and take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to us. What would you like to do when you finish your study in Prepa Linea Set? What would you like to start to, to do after you finish? Does anybody here have any idea about what, what would you like to do? Yes or no? What are you going to do after you finish? Or what would you like to do after you finish um, Prepa Linea Set? Do you have any wish, any desire, any aspiration or something? <clears throat> well, what do you imagine you will be doing in five years? Remember that the future is uh, uncertain and it could be certain in a short term, in a middle, mid term or in a long term, but it all depends on us. What would you like to improve in yourselves? What would you like to improve in yourselves, for example? Well, do you know what is improve, guys? Si sabemos que es improve o no. Chicos? Probably. No. Improve. Nope. It sounds like, but it's not. Improve is, for example, what you are doing these days in the audios. For example, in the, on the first week, I I tell you to use more than one minute and a half or two minutes, right? And, for example, in the primera semana, les dije, okay, in sus audios, okay, me van a entregar el audio y no les voy a penalizar porque es la primera semana, estamos aprendiendo paso a pasito y entonces... No les voy a tomar en cuenta el tiempo, sino que entreguen el audio, ¿ok? Pero para el siguiente, la siguiente semana ya me deben mejorar un poquito más. Ya les dije la respuesta. Este, <coughs> deben hacerlo mejor. 
¿sale? Y para esta semana obviamente van a ser menos tiempo. Si la, siguiente, si la semana pasada hicieron menos tiempo que la, la primera, esta tercera semana van a ser mucho menos. Entonces, improve significa mejorar, ¿sale? Entonces, la pregunta, la digo, la instrucción ahí dice, ¿qué es lo que les gustaría mejorar en su, en su vida, en ustedes, no? And it says, it's time to, to pause and reflect on your personal goals. Yes, on your personal goals. In this activity, you put, you put in practice your learnings in practice to describe in English what elements you would like to, to improve and, and describe in a short and mid-term plans. The purpose of this activity is to share information about your desires, aspirations, and personal plans. For example, right? Entonces, ¿qué vamos a hacer en esta semana en esa actividad integradora número 5? Pues vamos a descargar un archivo que se llama Tinker. ¿Ok? Les voy a compartir mi pantalla para que veamos de qué estamos hablando. Y dice así. Think about things you would like to improve in your life. What are you planning to do next year? And what you're learning to achieve in two years? And then write your answers in the next table. In the next table, we have different ambits. In the personal, personal ambit, about yourselves. Emotional, professional, and economic, right? And we have three columns where there are three questions, right? Aquí tenemos este, tres columnas con cuatro ámbitos. Ajá. En cada una de esas columnas le voy, le voy a escribir una respuesta a cada ámbito, ¿sale? Pero para ello, ¿qué, qué estructura gramatical voy a necesitar usar? Aquí mismo en cada columna yo les estoy diciendo qué es lo que vamos a utilizar. Por ejemplo, dice, en la primera columna, would like to más un verbo en su forma base. Lo que está aquí en rojito. Mira. Ajá. Esto. Y la pregunta dice, what would you like to improve in your life? Would and like to es futuro. ¿Sale? Dice aquí, I would like to study English, for example, en el ámbito personal. I would like to be more patient. En el ámbito emocional, ¿no? Me gustaría ser más paciente, según. Entonces, la estructura a utilizar en esta columna nada más es good like to más un verbo en su, en su forma simple. Tenemos aquí resaltado los elementos que tengo que tomar en cuenta. En verde los sujetos. En amarillo, este good like to, que es la estructura para el futuro. Un verbo en color azul. Elemento. Y el último que es este en color rojo, el complemento. ¿Ok? Si veo que mi actividad, que a mi actividad le falta alguno de estos elementos, entonces estoy haciendo mal mi actividad. Por lo tanto, debo de... Este, como se dice, debo de analizarla y corregirla para que esté mejor. Otro ejemplo, por ejemplo, en el, en el ámbito emocional, dice ahí, este, ¿qué les gustaría mejorar, no? What would you like to improve in your life? En lo emocional, por ejemplo, dice aquí, I would like to be more patient. Me gustaría ser más, más paciente. O no me gustaría ser más, ser enojón, ¿sale? Por ejemplo, en mi caso, ¿no? No me gustaría ser enojón y me gustaría ser más paciente. La misma estructura en los cuatro ámbitos en esta primera columna, por favor, chicos. Luego tenemos la columna del medio que dice Present Continuous. Y me van a decir, teacher, pero a ver. Si ahí dice present continuous, ¿por qué voy a utilizar esta estructura 
para el futuro. Bueno, esta estructura gramatical es present continuous exactamente, pero lo vamos a utilizar for fixed arrangements. ¿Eso qué quiere decir? Que algo que vaya a suceder pronto, o que esté sucediendo pronto, pues vaya a ser de a de veras. Ajá. Por ejemplo, unos boletos para el concierto de mi grupo de pop o de banda este, favorito. Que ya sé que va a salir ese, ese concierto el día, aquí estamos hoy a 20, el 24 de, de diciembre de 2023. Ese día va a haber ese concierto y ya tengo los boletos. Estoy seguro de que sí va a suceder ese evento. Ajá. Para ello es, debemos de incluir sí o sí una fecha, tal vez una, una hora, un día. ¿Sale? Por ejemplo, dice aquí, in the professional part, I'm going, no, I'm studying the master's degree on January 26 or 9 next year. ¿Por qué digo que? Aquí, ajá, porque digo que este, I'm studying, si es en presente continuo, pero si le agrego una fecha, una hora exacta, un día exacto, un año exacto, pues ya va a cambiar un fixed arrangement por un, digo, un present continuous por un fixed arrangement, ajá, un fixed arrangement como le estaba diciendo hace ratito. Y bueno, estos enunciados deben de tener sí o sí una fecha o una hora o un día exacto, un año exacto. Por ejemplo, aquí, I'm studying the Master Degree on 26 January online this year. Y luego dice, I'm saving money on December 1st to buy another car or another house. En este caso, pues sí, ya saben. Ajá. Ya están seguros que van a eh, hacer esa actividad. O que va a pasar esa actividad. Ajá. Por ejemplo, un concierto. Ese va a pasar sí o sí. Si ustedes están y si no están, también va a pasar. ¿Vale? Entonces, la estructura a utilizar aquí es el present continuous. Este present continuous lo vimos en la semana número uno. En la actividad integradora número uno que se llamó Dancing at the Movie. Ok, luego, <coughs> going to plus verb in base form, entonces vamos a poner aquí el going to con un verbo en su forma base, pero cuál es la diferencia entre el going to y el present continuous, bueno el present continuous es para fix arrangements, es decir, algo que ya está planeado, algo que ya está agendado, etcétera, como un concierto, como un avión, como un, este, un tren que van a tomar o un autobús que van a tomar, ya está agendado su horario y este, estén ustedes sí o no, ese tren va a salir, por ejemplo, o ese avión, o ese concierto va a pasar. A diferencia del going to, que el going to lo utilizamos para plans and intentions, Ajá. Para planes e intenciones lo utilizamos, entonces, este, pues no, no podría, eh, acuérdense que el futuro es incierto y si hacemos planes muchas veces nos sale, así dicen los dichos aquí en México, ¿no? Entonces, ¿qué es lo que voy a hacer? Voy a, ajá, esa es la interpretación correcta del going to. Por ejemplo, dice, what are you going to achieve in two years? ¿Qué es lo que van a lograr en dos años? Bueno, esa es mi intención, ese es mi plan, sin embargo, no estoy seguro. Dice, por ejemplo, I'm going to study the university. Voy a estudiar la maestría, la universidad, en este caso ustedes chicos, por ejemplo, ¿sale? Y así podemos irnos trabajando poco a poquito y que pues podamos hacer bien nuestras actividades. 
por ahí ya les he puesto ahí en sus en sus ¿qué? ok entonces esta estructura es going to en esta columna aquí es present continuous y aquí es would like to no se les olvide chicos porque es muy importante si me ponen uno de would like y uno de presente continuo y uno de will en cada una de las columnas va a estar mal su actividad porque estoy siendo muy claro en qué eh, estructuras gramaticales voy a utilizar en cada columna por eso se las puse de diferente color debemos de resaltar esos elementos para que no nos falte ninguno y nuestra actividad esté súper bien. Bueno, ya hablamos de tres este, estructuras gramaticales. Todavía nos falta hablar de otra. Y ustedes, ya, teacher, por favor, ya son muchas. Pues no, no son muchas, chicos. <risa> Bueno, ¿y qué estructura? ¿Dónde la voy a ocupar? Si aquí en esta tabla pues ya acabé mi actividad. Bueno, lo voy a ocupar en la siguiente parte de la unidad. Ustedes ya saben. Dice. Write a paragraph of five to eight lines describing how you will be in five years. Este will, a diferencia del going to, the present continuous y the would like to, este will solamente lo podemos interpretar o que le dé la palabra ra, 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 no, la palabra ra a todos los verbos. Por ejemplo, un will más play sería will play, jugaré, ajá, por ejemplo, will y buy, entonces sería compraré. También le da la terminación de, ¿verdad? Y entonces así nos vamos a seguir. Sale con esta estructura gramatical que yo estoy poniendo aquí, que es subject plus will plus verb in base form y complement. Ajá. Esos elementos debe de tener mi actividad para que esté correcta. Por ejemplo, dice, in five years I will work in a bigger company with a friend. Eso es este, comparativos. Then I will learn more money in order to offer my son a better life. Estoy usando ahí futuro simple uh, con will. Y luego dice, I think I will do my degree accounting. But I think the um, I think I will finish my high school first. La estructura gramatical a utilizar aquí es futuro simple con el auxiliar que es will. ¿Sale? Ese will, le da, como ya les dije hace rato, les da la terminación. La iré. Ajá. Pues está bien. Will work, trabajaré. Will play, jugaré. Will um, win. Ganaré. Will study, estudiaré. Will win. Este will. Eh, algo. Sale con esta estructura gramática. Está bien. Luego, chicos. Son cinco líneas como mínimo. Máximo son de ocho. Ajá. Si exceden de ocho, no hay tanto problema. El problema va a ser si me ponen nada más cuatro líneas. Porque acá abajo, ya les decía yo, pues aquí eh, escucho su audio y posteriormente pues les, les califico. ¿Dudas? Hasta aquí. Ok, aquí la pregunta de, de Brisa dice, en la pregunta 1 escribe un párrafo de 5 a 8 líneas describiendo cómo serás en 5 años. Este, sí, ¿cuál es su, su duda? 
¿A qué se refiere? No, ninguna. A ver, vamos a ver acá abajo. En lo personal, laboral. Eh, como este, biopositive thinker. Eh, laboral como este, Brisa. ¿Podrá abrir su microfonito y comentarnos? O escribirlo aquí en el chat, como guste. Bueno, Ángel dice que no tiene ninguna pregunta. Está muy bien. Ok, ¿cómo se verá en cinco años en lo personal? Pues en general, ¿no? ¿Cómo se verán en cinco años? Puede ser, trabajaré en una empresa mejor, eh, me pondré a estudiar más inglés, este, pedir un ascenso en el, en el trabajo, no sé. Ustedes saben porque tienen mucha imaginación. Ajá. ¿Cómo se verán en cinco años en el lo personal? Bueno, pues ahí está la pregunta. Para que puedan seguir participando en el foro. Cosa que algunos definitivamente no han hecho y unos sí han hecho. Entonces es este, es eso chicos. No sé si contesté su duda este Brisa. Creo que sí. Muy bien, muy bien, Brisa. Bueno, este, los voy a sacar de la sesión para que este podamos continuar con la siguiente sesión virtual y posteriormente pues ya salirnos del, de la sesión porque ya se va a acabar, ¿vale? Entonces los voy a sacar y nos vemos en un ratito, ¿vale? No me tardo.